Hi, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and yeah, I shoot a lot of poster videos, let's face it, but it's not very often that I say that this is my, you know, favorite ever poster by a certain significant artist. It only happens once per major artist, right? And boy, I'll tell you, it is Stones time for that proclamation, I can guarantee you. This is my favorite Stones concert poster in their entire 50-year career. And uh, that's really saying something, obviously, a lot of good artists have been involved in making great Stones posters, but this one was actually still from the young, naive, and innocent days of cardboard boxing style posters where not too much attention was paid to the design, certainly not when compared to the 70s or 80s, but boy, this is just a great day-glow layout that I just absolutely love. So this is November of 1965, the fourth United States tour for the Rolling Stones, and this poster just seems to have it all. Everything that I certainly look for in a poster, and a lot of collectors, including beautiful day-glow colors. Look at those, just day-glow oranges and yellows and stuff, really speaks to you across a room. It's got a photograph of the Stones, which is always a desirable thing to have on a concert poster. Really nice uh, publicity uh, still there of them. And it's got song titles, you know, there's a couple of monsters, Get Off My Cloud and Satisfaction. Great to see song titles on a poster. This thing is large and made of cardboard, and boy, is it ever big. 22 inches across and probably 30 inches tall. I didn't make an exact measurement. It's got great ticket information up there in the venue, um, in the venue area. You know, lots of details about where to buy tickets and everything. That's always a lot of fun. And finally, it is a Globe poster printed in Baltimore. And there's the credit at the bottom, Globe poster Baltimore, which is um, a nice pedigree for boxing-style concert posters, that's for sure. So... This was just um, such a great time in the Stones' career, too. I showed you the two singles, Get Off My Cloud and Satisfaction. Heavens, Get Off of My Cloud, by the way, they left out one word for space purposes here, was number one in both America and England at the time. And uh, they had a top ten hit, in a, uh, top ten album at the time in America as well, um, Out of Our Heads, which it had been number one for three weeks previously in the fall, so that's a, you know, they had a very hot album and two very hot singles in a row. So, you know, Satisfaction and Get Off of My Club, how can you get any better for the Stones? No doubt about it. Satisfaction, by the way, had been number one for an entire month, the summer of 65. So, just killer key timing in the Stones' career, that's for sure. This was their biggest tour yet, their fifth American tour, excuse me, their fourth American tour, Biggest one yet. They did um, well, 37 different venues in 38 days. Wow. 20 different states. That's 40% of the country. And may not seem you know, as much now, but in the time in the mid-60s, transportation options were much more limited. And that was quite a trek where they worked pretty hard, or at least all their business people did around them. And, uh, but the Stones were excited because it was such a trek. It was the first time they'd ever chartered their own private airplane to get around America, so they were much more in control of their own fate, if you will. Um, in researching Stone's tours, Bill Wyman's books are always really valuable for information, and Bill points out that for this tour, each stone grossed about $50,000 each, which again, that was in mid-60s money. So there you have um, this big, giant Rolling Stones proclamation right in the middle of the poster. Right below them, you can see there are the vibrations, and they were a five-man, uh, we'll show you a picture of them a little closer, five-man R&B group from Los Angeles, and they're probably best known in history for coming up with Hang On Sloopy. They actually had um, a hit called My Girl Sloopy the year before, in 1964, and the McCoys recorded it and changed the words a bit to Hang On Sloopy, and that was a current hit right now at the time of this show, so you can be sure the Vibrations did their version, uh, My Girl Sloopy, and the crowd probably lapped it up, if you will. Then below the vibrations, you have Patty and the Bluebells, as you can see. You may know if you're into R&B that that's Patty LaBelle at the beginning of a very long and illustrious career for Patty. She really hit her stride about a decade later in the mid-70s as just LaBelle, and with hits like, you know, Lady Marmalade and stuff. And what's really neat, as we move in on the picture, as I position this around, of Patty and the Bluebells, there we have the picture. There's really some women of note in there. Uh, besides Patty herself, you've got Nona Hendrix, who went on to be a solo R&B chart artist in her own right in the 80s. And you have Cindy Birdsong, who left uh, two years later after this uh, poster in 1967 and joined the Supremes, replacing Florence Ballard 
and that means that Cindy Birdsong sang on things like Love Child and Someday We'll Be Together. So, nice, nice pedigree for sure for the Bluebells there, later to be known much better as LaBelle. And, uh, whoops, I backed away too fast. The very bottom line of the poster. Sometimes the smaller and more obscure, the more I like to talk about them. The Rocking Ramrods. Seeing that orange stripe across the bottom? And then it says Fu Manchu. Well, the Rocking Ramrods, actually Rockin' Ram Jobs, Ram, Ram Jobs, maybe I should slow down, Pete, uh, was a four-man band, uh, rock band from Boston, and they actually served as the backup group for both the Vibrations and Patty and the Bluebells, and then they did their own thing. And their current single was Fu Manchu, which you saw here on the poster, right? Fu Manchu. Well, interestingly, that's an abbreviation because I found the full page billboard ad for, <laughs> that's right, see that? Rockin' Ramrods, and it's Don't Fool with Fu Manchu. <laughs> and in fact, since the poster doesn't have their photo, I'll show it to you right there. There's the Rockin' Rab Rods from Boston in all their glory. And uh, unfortunately, this record didn't do too much. You know, you've just got like label information and so forth at the bottom. But we know the real record is Don't Fool with Fu Manchu. So I know that's getting into really arcane trivia for a Rolling Stones concert poster, but we like to know who's on the poster, right? Who is worthy of being mentioned with the Stones on their greatest concert poster of all time? So uh, in 65 in the fall, by the way, the Stones. Uh, for this fourth tour. We're doing about a dozen songs per show, and sometimes there were two shows per day, as we said, 37 venues in 38 days. Um, so they would do, um, obviously, the two hits on the poster, Get Off My Cloud and Satisfaction, the two most recent smashes. They had to do, but I'm sure they also wanted to. And they also did Heart of Stone, Play With Fire, and The Last Time, very regularly. But those were their last five big chart singles. Interestingly, the Stones were being very chronological at this point. They were ignoring their 1964 chart hits, including Not Fade Away, Tell Me, You're Coming Back to Me, and Time Is On My Side. They just didn't do them. They just wanted to stick with the latest, I guess. They would sometimes do It's All Over Now, but mostly they would do those five most recent hit singles, but they would also do half a dozen R&B covers, which of course consisted a lot of um, the content of their records, uh, things like covers of Marvin Gaye's Hitchhike and stuff like that. So. Okay, so um, I just wanted to take, come in one more time on the tour blank aspect of this poster and the top stripe there. See it says New Haven Arena, Thursday, November 4th. I just want to point out that um, this poster has been seen from many other cities. For example, here's November 12th from Greensboro, North Carolina. You can see that blue printing up there and then the rest of the poster is just like the one I'm holding in my hand. And a couple days later on November 14th, here's Knoxville, Tennessee. And you can see these are obviously photographs. This one's taken at an angle, but you get the idea. And the same poster, Rock and Ramrods down at the bottom and everything. And then also November 21 from Dallas, Texas. And this is a more straight on picture. You can really see the venue info um, easily. So this is just three pictures I took out of my photo albums to show you that this poster was used at a lot of different cities because it was a big tour. Um, and interestingly also, the blueprint um, is all I've harped on as being the printed in tour blank info, but that orange stripe that says Rolling Stones Spectacular Show, that also is actually part of the tour blank aspect of this poster because sometimes um, a, the radio station guys would have their, they, they would strip out that line and put in radio station information such as this one from Greensboro which says WCOG Radio Presents. And here's the picture again and you can see in the orange stripe it plugs W cog, I guess they called themselves radio, but the default position for this tour blank was to simply say the Rolling Stones Spectacular Show. And as far as I'm concerned that that strip should say Rolling Stones Spectacular Poster. <laughs> nice segue, huh? Because that's what it is. It's just an awesome, awesome Stones concert poster from back in the good old days when they do a dozen songs and run off stage probably after 30 or 40 minutes. And Brian Jones, of course, was in the band and in the photograph. So. Hope you enjoyed it. The Stones at their greatest. Really fun, and I'm, I'm recording this, by the way, during the Stones' 50th anniversary year, so extra fun all the way around. So thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.